I'm going to welcome now um, the wonderful team from Fairlawn Primary School. So I believe we have Robert Evans, Rachel Peters, Emily. Emily, do you want to introduce your amazing team? Well, yes, because this is all about people making play. And although I introduced Opal back in 2019, there's absolutely no way we'd be where we are now if we didn't have our fabulous Opal curriculum leads. So Robert is a trained forest school teacher as well as a year five teacher, leads on science, runs our pupil parliament and is an absolute play champion. And then we have Rachel, who leads, who is our um, eco rep um, lead and teaches in year one. Um, she also has a child in a local school. So we had very early doctors and they have really pushed it. In fact, made made us do things that maybe we weren't comfortable to do yet, to, you know, push the child's agenda. So I am definitely going to hand over to them because they've presented, they've got a little video and some things to tell you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, so obviously we've had a lot of support from our leadership team to help introduce Opal um, at Fairlawn, but it's involved more than just having uh, support from our leaders. It's involved changing the perception of what play looks like and feels like with our whole school community. And that's taken a bit of time and a bit of effort. We've had to change the perception of what play is for our parents, uh, all the teachers, our PTA, the governors, and even our maintenance team. We've had to change what people understand play to be and what it looks like. Um, we've also had to change what our school looks like. Um, it doesn't look neat and tidy anymore. There is play equipment everywhere. And we've also had to take parts of our school which weren't accessible to children and we've, we've opened them up. We've made them part of the play, part of us, part of our play environment. So it's taken a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um, but play has become the very heart of Fairlawn. Um, and building on what uh, Rachel just said, we started our Opal journey at the same time, um, really as COVID hit, um, and but also at the, the same time we were becoming a rights-respecting school. So we were embedding uh, the United Nations um, UNCRC into the heart of the ethos of the school. So the right to play, the respect for children's views, these were things that the children were learning about and were that they were embracing. Um, so we showed them the vision of where we wanted to take play. And we really, really uh, earned their trust. And I think we, the way we, um, the, what, what Rachel said about changing spaces, we showed them what could be possible. Um, and you can see the children playing with adults there. I think the children persuaded some of the adults who maybe weren't so keen to begin with um, that actually, what, like Michael says, if we trust the competent child, um, the, the children, you know, they they are worth you trusting them. And um, that mutual empowerment between the children and the adults uh, has really led uh, to such a brilliant change, um, changing attitude, changing spaces and changing ethos at our school. So we've got a video uh, from more people to tell you a little bit more about Fairlawn. Fairlawn since April, um, this is quite quiet. I do recommend everybody whack up your sound, tell everybody to shut up behind you and just listen really carefully. They're no longer sort of confined to one playground, one area. Um, all areas of the school have pretty much been opened up now. Um, it's free flow, so all ages can play. We've, um, it's just so much more enriched and inclusive. Uh, I think there's something for everybody now at playtime. Uh, we have, you know, uh, physical parts of play. We have um, creative, we have calm areas, quiet areas. Rachel's really upset about my room. Um, you know, dressing up. There, there's, there's just something for everybody, I, I think. It's the best part now. Yeah, playtime. Sort of playing rangers now, which is rather than sort of lunchtime supervisors before, it was more sort of supervising children. And I think just what telling them all not to do this, not to do that. I think it's more now encouraging play. We facil facilitate play, um, you know, 
want them to try new things. Um, oh, look, what can we do with this? You know, they give them spare parts and they, well, in fact, children probably, they're more creative than we are. They, they come up with wonderful ideas. So, yeah. Play has changed for your recognition at Fairlawn. And with that, the adults have had to change too, particularly me. I've been teaching for a very long time, over three decades. And I've had to start asking myself the question, why am I saying this to the children? Why am I saying, no, they can't go there, or they must stop doing that, or it's dangerous to go behind the shed? You know, it's not actually dangerous. And I think what we've become is risk um, embracing rather than risk averse. So that's what I'd like to say about open play. It's been transformative and I would never go back to how it was before. Hi, my name's Jeremy. I'm a, a parent at Fairlawn and um, local designer maker. Um, I think the schools, since I've known it, has been really um, changing its attitude to play, having so much more resources, opening up green spaces. We built a tree house um, that I designed for the Golden Garden space which has been a real success and a kind of respite place for kids to have creative time reading in nature. Um, the school identified they needed some more dynamic moving parts because all their current play equipment is really rigid and fixed. Um, so we designed this 100% recycled quality playground, made of bicycle tires, which are really robust, waterproof, um, loads of high technology in them, uh, but they're kind of destined for landfill after their useful life, so it's really wonderful to repurpose them into a free-formed uh, planning and climbing space in a natural spot. Thanks. Hi, I'm Charlotte, um, a parent at Fairlawn. How do I help foster play at Fairlawn? Well, I'm 100% behind it. I'm sort of in the person that's trying to communicate between the play leaders and the parents and carers at Fairlawn. I post information about donations that are needed on the PTA WhatsApp, which then is fed to the different class WhatsApps um, about donations needed for play days. I'll remind people when play days are happening. Um, I've just written a little piece for the weekly school newsletter about winter play and how we're going to have to think more about what children are wearing so they can get the best out of their play every day. And we're trying to build up a clothes bank in each classroom of spare coats, warm tops, jumpers, socks, gloves. Um, so if children get wet or muddy at playtime, it doesn't affect their learning in the afternoon. If they're a bit cold, if they forgot their coat. So all these things aren't something that will stop them playing or getting the best out of their learning. Uh, so, just to finish off, just to say that, that I think the most wonderful thing is that the atmosphere at lunchtime, break time, play days is one of pure joy. Every child is engaged, happy, interested, working in groups, busy, um, having fun, using their imagination, being creative, um, having the best time. Thank you. What I like about Fairlawn Playtime is that so much, there's so much to do. You can really express your creative ideas with all the equipment. And my, one of my personal favourites is making big dens with all the crates. What I like about Playtime is that we've got so much equipment and everybody's including everyone else. But my personal favourites are playing in the mats and doing gymnastics and swinging in the hammocks. I like all the different activities and all the different toys. I love to say that. What I really like about Open Play is that there's so many different spaces that you can play in and not just one confined space. Like there's the Golden Garden, the Mudge area, the Water Supply area, and the Slope. And it's just, there's like a lot of freedom with it. What I like about Open Play is we get to play with loads of different people, um, older and younger than us, and I just like to say hi to them whenever. And I just like having the freedom to run around wherever I want, whenever I want. And it's just amazing. Walking obstacle horses with my friends and playing in the mud. I like making mud pies 
voice, my friend. I'm changing for my voice, my friend. I like down building with the poles and the crates and the planks. I like how there's lots of equipment that the teachers give us and my favourite equipment is the rebus and stick boards. I don't even think there's so many things to do at playtime, but one of my favourite things is to play in the mud kitchen. When when I'm at playtime, I love doing tire races with my friends and rolling them down the hill. Like going in the digging zone because I like to get muddy. I like to go on the swings to play with my friends. So much good stuff. So you are in the heart of London. Yes. And you're playing like you're in, I don't know, just. Yes. I watched the earlier video and I was sort of looking longingly at those fields thinking, oh, I'd love a sandpit that big. But actually, we we really do have quite a small, odd, uh, a small space, but we make the most of it. Um, and even sort of really small spaces, which before we, you know, we didn't sort of see them as play spaces. We've opened those up um, and now they've become little nooks and crannies, which can be, you know, calm areas or reading areas. So there's there's so much variety. And that sort of goes back to what Juliet was saying. And I was it really resonated with me that there's there's so much variety. There's something for everybody. Robert, could you tell me, like, what was, like, of all the people that have helped you make play happen, who are the people you'd particularly like to say thank you to? Um, well, we've got a great parent community here. Uh, so we've, as you saw from the video, we're very fortunate that we've got people that are really passionate about play in the community. Um, all the maintenance staff that have um, had to do with all the requests that we make. Um, so we, our school is on a hill, um, which doesn't make things particularly easy. So when we get things like soil or sand delivered, they get delivered to the bottom of the hill. Um, and the only way to, is through um, wheelbarrow uh, work. So um, the maintenance staff, definitely. And then the play rangers, you know, who have gone from um, kind of from not really engaging with play, being told to tell people to stop doing things. And um, it's been a big change for them and they have just embraced it. I think the children and them together have really worked as an incredible team um, and it's just such a positive attitude um, atmosphere now on the playground. I often think that that just the simple act of turning people from being lunchtime supervisors to being a play ranger, it's just a wonderful way to say thank you and celebrate your people. Um, I look forward to seeing you back here uh, in the Q&A. Um, and congratulations, everybody. Uh, uh, Michael will be awarding um, uh, Fairlawn their platinum next week with lots of VIPs, I believe. So <laughs> congratulations on that.